Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. This is gonna be about Mark DeFreest, who's known as the Houdini of Florida prisons. He did, tried to escape, uh, he did escape seven times. He attempted to escape 13 times. But you know, being it's mental health month, I really wanna get into this video a little bit deeper. But before I get started, check me out on YouTube member programs, uh, Patreon member programs, Discord. Check out merch, my book, Gangster Redemption. Check out the podcast, The Real Deal with me, Larry Lawton. It's going great. Uh, we have shows every Monday and Friday, and they're a lot of fun. So make sure you check that out as well. Let me get into this video. And, and, and I saw a couple of videos on it. Some people talked to me about it. Uh, and being it's Mental Health Month, this is more to me a mental health case than it is a uh, video on escape or something just normal like that, normal like that. But you, you, you probably understand what I mean about that. Here's my problem with this whole thing. First of all, if you look up Mark DeFriest, uh, he, he's my, my age. That's what caught me exactly. He's born in 1960, I'm born in 1961. And he's been in prison, listen to this everybody, 36 years, a Cuban of 36 years, which is mostly straight. Except one time he actually got out in 2019 and he only was out for seven days. I'll get into that in a minute. It, it, it's really sad, this whole case. And he has 27 years in the hole. 27 years in the hole. That is uh, uh, mind boggling to me for a man who spent three years in a hole, uh, 27 years in a hole. There is no way that this man is not mentally ill. Obviously, this case is gonna be a little bit deep, and I'm gonna get into a little bit, Mark, and show you a few uh, things about Mark. First of all, Mark, Mark DeFries is from Gadsden County, which is in Tallahassee, Florida. He was really on the autistic spectrum. He is on the autistic spectrum. They called him a savant. He worked with his dad. His dad was a former OSS, which was in World War II, OSS became the CIA. So he, this kid would learn a lot of how to do shit whether it was uh, escape, make things, break things, kind of like, a, I, I talk about it sometimes, MacGyver, you guys wouldn't know it, but a TV show called MacGyver and a guy would fucking blow shit up with fucking a match and a fucking, yeah, I don't know, a can of gas or some shit, blow a town up. But listen to this before I get into even going through infographics and other videos I've been watching. And there's also a documentary about this guy and that documentary to me is pretty powerful because it really, really puts an onus on how fucked up our prison system is and how fucked up the jails and prisons and not only in Florida but all over the country are. And they need change. We totally need change. We know that. That's part of what I do. Uh, but anyway, this young man, he's born at the same time I was. He gets arrested. Listen, his dad dies. This is what he gets arrested for. This is what blows me away. Now. Mind you, they know he's a savant. A savant means like a very awkwardly social, uh, can't really communicate with people uh, too well, but he, he can do certain things that are just amazing. It's a savant. Uh, they have an ability to do things. Sometimes I wish I was a savant in certain things, obviously. A lot of musicians they find out later are savants, but they conquered the other social side of it. Well, anyway, this young man, he, his dad dies. He's very close with his dad. His stepmom, not so, you know what I mean? Obviously, she didn't like him, she hated him. Well, the dad, in the will, the dad gives this kid all the tools, all his tools and all his stuff from the house. He gives them to them and he wills them over. But the will wasn't probated, which also mean is finalized. When you go to probate, they finalize the will, they say it's legal, okay, what's in it? They split. Well, beforehand, he goes, before the will is probated, he goes and takes the tools. Takes the tools that are his in the will. Well, the mom calls the cops and they ended up getting for theft and they arrest him for theft. Now, when they arrest him, he runs away. He had a gun, not, no brandish, never pulled in nothing. Has a gun, he goes away for four years. Now, mind you, he thinks he's stealing his own fucking tools. His dad willed them to him, they are his, it's just a probate. You know, I think about this, and this is in 1980, this happened. And, you know, I was in the service at the time. And I think about this young man, and now they give him four years in prison. Now he's socially awkward to begin with. But he doesn't believe he belongs in prison, does he? I mean, obviously, if you take something that you know is yours, and you wonder why the system is this fucked up. I think back there it's even fucked up more than it is now. I, I, I want to believe that this wouldn't happen today. But to be honest, I'm not so sure of that either. Anyway, this young man... 
uh, goes to prison and he ha he escapes. He don't believe he belongs there. He, he totally doesn't believe he's, he belongs in there. And so what does he do? After his initial arrest, his mental state is, is, is checked. Now he tries to escape in prison. It's his first county jail in Bay County, in Bay, Bay County, Florida. He escapes jail. <laughs> Listen what he does, I love this. He, he, he finds in the medicine cabinet in the medical department, he's under evaluation, and they have LSD. And we all know what LSD is. LSD is a mind-altering drug, acid, big mushrooms, to a mega degree. The government used LSD a lot in those days. Uh, Especially to check, this is 40 years ago, to check people's, you know, they, they test shit on these people. That's what they did. They used a lot of inmates as guinea pigs. So what, what happens with this young man, he takes this LSD and he dumps a hundred tablets in the coffee. Now think of that. He doses these people to a dose that they go crazy. They literally go crazy in the in the jail itself. And he tried, he was gonna escape, but the plan doesn't come about. And they figure it out and they lock the unit down. And again, he's now being evaluated. Well, he, another escape he does, he jumps over, he gets five inmates to rush a fence. He, they jump and he knew how, his father taught him how to get over barbed wire, get over things. Again, dad's former CIA. So here this kid jumps over the fence, he gets away, steals a car, small enough to hotwire a car, and but he gets caught. Of course he's gonna get caught. He doesn't plan that well. He's doing things on impulse. He is a autistic person. Five psychiatrists say he's mentally ill. One said, no, he's just a deviant. The state of Florida doesn't do the right thing and they take him to trial and they end up giving him a life sentence. Now remind you, and I noticed from this channel and from all my overseas viewers, which thank you guys, uh, in most countries, Germany, Sweden, and, and uh, uh, those countries, they don't charge you for an escape because it's a natural act. Obviously, if you break something, they charge you for the damage or whatever it is, but they don't charge you for an escape or an attempted escape. They consider it a natural act, and it is. Who out there just goes to prison and says, you know, I'm just gonna stay here, thanks, uh, I'll live my life. No, it's not natural. It's just not natural. I was in there, which I had an outdate. That's a whole different animal. I used to sit there and think all the time when I was in, in prison, if I had a life sentence, I used to think how I would get out. What gets me crazy in this thing, a documentary comes out in 2014 and it really puts, puts, it puts the onus on the prison system. Here is the only man ever in Florida. Now he's in Florida State Prison now. This is this is gonna be wild. He's in Florida State Prison. They put him in the hole above death row. That's in Florida State Prison. And he goes in there and they abuse him to a big degree. Now, they put him in Florida State solitary confinement, served as an escape-proof cell. The Miami Herald reported that he held the only non-violent inmate in solitary confinement ward, period. One floor above the electric chair. DeFrost was denied books, magazines, radio, TV, window sunlight, water, toiletries for 11 straight days. Now, I, I know what that's like because they did that to me. They take everything out of you, they put you naked in a cell and you're there, and they did that to him. This man has, yes, he has a ton of infractions in prison. When I'm reading this, I'm laughing because what he got infractions for, I had infractions for. Building a weapon, knives, alcohol, making alcohol, uh, now, you gotta remember, when you fashion a weapon in prison, it's usually for your defense. And this guy's never hurt anybody in prison. He had all these infractions, but a lot of people say these infractions were uh, ways to keep him in the hole. It's a way to keep him in prison. Uh, and, and I got, I get it. I mean, listen, this defrost in Florida State Prison witnessed one of the worst beatings and murders in Florida history in the state prison. In 1999, Frank Valdez was murdered by guards, and the guards were convicted of murdering a correct. Uh, uh, he was convicted of murdering a correctional officer. Well, the guards went on trial and they got convicted as well. And listen to this: they had to take this guy, and defrost was transferred to a prison in California for his own safety. Now, you wonder why they do all that when they're abusing this guy to the, to the ninth degree. Listen, they saw a mental prison, mental person, and they, they just kept using this guy. It, it blows my mind away. It really, really does, everybody. And I'm gonna look at a few things on infographics that kind of make light of things that, that really kind of hurt me. And it got to me because, you know, this guy, wow, I, I, I get emotional thinking about what they did to him because it brings back memories of what they did to me. Putting in you a cell, 
shutting down your toilet system, which is a suction, and then you're shitting and pissing in your cell and on you, and you're begging them to, to put the water on. There's no water on. And they don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't get the heartlessness. Now, again, I'm trying to give credit to the good guards because there are good guards out there. There's a guy named Massey. There's guys uh, Hoyle. There's guys that I knew and they were guards of mine that they were normal people just doing their job and they wouldn't do that. They, I don't even know if they took, turned a blind eye, they wouldn't to certain things. They were men, they were treated other people like men. You, no human being treats another human like they treated this man. And to know that he's mental, to know that he has, has a totally on the spectrum of autism, how do you keep doing that and go home and justify that to your wife or your kids or anybody else for that matter? He does get out in 2019 after there was a lot of uh, of uh, hoopla about what went on with him. He's back in prison, just to let you know right now. And uh, he goes to Oregon, where he actually got, he met a woman through a pen pal. Now listen, mind you, this guy don't know how to fuck yet. Anyway, he gets out of prison, he goes to this facility. The first was finally granted parole on February 5th of 2019. He needed to go to spend 12 months at a mental health and substance abuse treatment facility, which he needed, totally fucking needed. Obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, because he gets caught with methamphetamine in his system and stuff. And they put him back in prison. He is in Union Correctional Institution in Florida. Now, this man, obviously exhibited bipolar mania, is what the director of the facility said. They weren't ready for him, for sure. And within the 13th of February, he gets out the 5th, the 13th, they're doing paperwork to get him back in prison. And he is in prison to this day, so he really wasn't out of prison at all. And I look at this young man, and I say, if this isn't the worst case of abuse of a person who had mental illness. You know, I look at my own mental health and there's no question with my PTSD. I talked about it on my last podcast, if you haven't seen that. Monday's podcast was deep because it talked about picking up dead bodies and all the stuff I did in the Coast Guard uh, and uh, Freedom Flotillers and everything else I did. But, you know, I look at this, this case and it just boggles my mind that the system can think they can raise someone for 40 years or 37 years or whatever it is and fucking think this guy's normal. This guy's not normal. It's almost sad because what do you do with him? He definitely doesn't need in the pr prison system. He maybe needs it in, in, in a confined mental institution at this point because I really think this guy is that, that crazy. You can't spend that much time in the hole and not be fucking nuts. And I mean totally nuts. It's a testament to maybe the, the autism he has that he's even functionable in any way in a regular facility. And I don't know how they're dealing with this man. They have to know everything about him. He's obviously a famous uh, person. You could look him up. Mark the Freest in Wikipedia will blow you away. Well, of course, Infographics did a video on him. And I think, again, they kind of brushed over some of, the, some of the parts that I think that are important. Uh, especially during mental health month, because this isn't an escape. He's known as the Houdini of Florida, because he escaped seven times. Listen, he's got such a savant mind. He could memorize the curves of a key and the angle, you know, the angle and the thickness, and actually fashion a key out of paper. Or you know, he'd get uh, toilet paper, harden it, and do certain things. But think of that memory that the key even works. That blows me the fuck away. I mean, to have the talent, listen, I can get out of cuffs, I can do certain things. Not like this fucking guy. This guy is a is a master at this kind of stuff. Obviously, as a, a one-track mind, he could figure something out. That's what those brains are. But he can't keep going. He doesn't go to the next level. He could never stay out of prison because he never thought that far ahead. Can hotwire a car and then take off. Now what? No money, no avenue no people what are you gonna do i mean he's not smart enough to fucking uh do other things obviously he you know he always justified it and in, in, in a way he's right he justified his escapes because he didn't belong there now remind you remember what this man was put in prison for he stole his own tools you know i never believed oj simpson should have went away for getting his own memorabilia back that he Obviously, it was a, a uh, sports memorabilia deal that he really went to away, away for nine years with, which I think they fucked him. They really used his past with the Nicole Simpson, and, and, and that's, that's a whole other story. But he didn't belong in prison for what he did, in my mind. Anyway, this man was put away for something he didn't do. I mean, how... 
I could see my mentality if something happened to me going to get what I think is mine. I do that anyway. Obviously, I think I'm a little bit more calculating. But here's this fucking, you know, I, I never read about the stepmom, and I'm sure she's dead by now. Uh, maybe not, but what a fucking bitch. Tools are in the will. He comes and takes the tools. You still call the cops? and get him arrested, and then of course press charges? Are you fucking a jerk off or what? You, uh, uh, man, how, how, much, how, how much do you hate the kid? That blows me away as well. Let's go through some of this video. I'm not gonna go through it all because it kind of makes me mad and I'm gonna go over with infographics. And, and I'm not knocking infographics. Listen, I think infographics get a lot of things wrong. They have the nice fucking cartoon character shit but they get a lot wrong, so I don't think they get their information the right, they got it the right way, what happened, but they didn't go deep enough into it and they took light of certain things. And I, I don't know if I can knock them because I live that life, so I do know what it's like. Let me just run through a few of these. When Mark saw rolled up copper sheets, the first thing that came to his mind was, they really mustn't want me to stay. That's because what he saw in the workshop were all the necessary bits and pieces to fashion a homemade gun, aka a zip gun. With the copper, he made the gun barrel and then he fixed that to a homemade pistol grip. In the bathroom, he picked his locks again and produced his homemade gun. Pointing his zip gun at the guards, he shouted, anybody move and I'll blow your brains out. He actually fashioned a gun, made a gun in the shop and, and it worked and he fired it to show it worked. How do you get the bullets? I mean, I get, I, I, that to me probably is the most thing. I can understand the gun, the trigger, a hammer, all of that on a gun, but I can't understand the actual uh, bullet end of it, you know, whether it's matchsticks. I, I don't know. It's, this guy's just such a genius, and he's willing to do what it takes to escape uh, from going to medical and taking out his own tooth and, and, and crazy stuff. He'd had his chances. Now they wanted him to suffer. And suffer he did, in jail, while the authorities tried to figure out if this kid was mentally fit to stand trial. They kept him locked down for 24 hours a day. One man said that wasn't the case, calling Mark a malingerer, meaning someone pretending to be mentally unwell. That same man decades later changed his mind. There were six doctors that evaluated Five said he was mentally unfit. The one who said he was is now not only said he, he, he's not mentally fit, recanted after many, many years, he also is now appearing at hearings for him and stuff and saying how he how he's not mentally ready for prison so this guy changed his mind but how does the system fucking take one guy over five you know i often say this as a person you go to a doctor and see six doctors say i have a heart problem one says no who do you believe you better believe the six uh, the other five and get your heart checked am i right uh, this one is kind of very confusing to me if you want to call it that i mean i don't even know how to, how, how, to, how to justify these things. And they're happening more, well, they're coming to light more and more. Let's put it that way, everybody. They come to light more and more. That didn't help the 20-year-old Mark who was sent back to jail. There he made another gun, an improved version of his last zip gun, even though for this one he had to use an empty roll of toothpaste. I was in my gunsmith phase, I could make a gun out of anything, Mark would later recall. This time he threatened the guards, and just to make sure the gun was working, he fired it at a wall. It was working alright, and many other inmates saw that Mark had not shot anywhere near the guards. But enough was enough. The guards beat Mark within an inch of his life and forced him into a pitch black cell, naked, bruised, and broken. This part really disturbed me. Them beating him to down, and I know that feeling. I was beaten once a month for 11 straight months. It, it, it fucking, it, 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 it's, it's something that you, you it's kind of hard to fathom. You get to the point where you want to die and you don't mind fighting them. You don't mind fighting people because you're, you're in such a sad state that you want interactions of some sort. And you know, I don't think this is the case with him. Uh, with me it was. Now, I'm looking at this and throwing him in this dark cell, 11 straight days with no, again, magazines, anything, anything, anything. It's called a dry cell and it gives me the, it gives me the goosebumps because, you know, it happened to me so I know what this guy faced. Knowing he was, you know, crazy. And I'm surprised he really hasn't taken his life, uh, but survival is a crazy mechanism in us all. Uh, I, 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 I thought about it but I always had that other part of my brain that wouldn't let me. Uh, but in this case, uh, this one hurt me, this, this part hurt me. For firing at the wall, he was convicted of attempted murder. Later, he was sent to the Florida State Prison, a prison that at the time was said to be totally ungovernable. The former warden of that prison said it was an ungovernable prison, 
It was that out of line, out of whack. Inmates jumped this guy. Of course, he, he's so autistic, he's not getting along with it. He was what they call a loner in prison. Uh, and you can do that, but not if you're socially awkward and you, and you don't even have to talk to people. And, and then he had this thing where he talked back and, you know, he had that kind of way about him. He, you know, he never thought he was doing anything wrong. So he was raped uh, in prison. Uh, the things that happened to him, man, it's just a, this is not right. The order given by the prison authorities was no clothes for the prisoner, no mattress or sheets. Conversation with anyone was prohibited, which included prison trustees. He was given no toiletries, no tissues, no toothpaste, no soap. They turned off the water in his cell at times and he couldn't even flush the toilet. He had to eat with his hands and in the total darkness. The torture and humiliation was later compared to what happened at Guantanamo Bay. He had to live in silence and darkness, naked, like a trapped animal. And if that's not cruel and unusual punishment, then what is? Isn't that the truth? What I experienced was cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, if the, you look at the definition and you look up what cruel and unusual punishment means for the Eighth Amendment of the United States Constitution, Eighth Amendment, if that's not cruel and unusual punishment, I don't know what is, and I don't know how people can get away with doing that to somebody. And all those things, I totally understand because I was thrown in that. And I know what it means to have no water when they shut it off and you're begging them and you and, and your shit and piss is, is building up and you know you you're literally eating. I ate stuff that was spit in and, and people would spit and I'd take it out of the potatoes and fucking eat whatever I had to eat to fucking survive because. You know, you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know what you won't do to f survive. I do know. I mean, I, I, I ate stuff, I mean, I didn't even know what it was. It was anything to put in me. It got a point there where I thought sometimes the food was okay, and, and, and the stupidest shit was okay, so figure that out. Cruel and unusual punishment to the hundredth degree, and uh, I, I'm surprised nobody ever gets uh, convicted of that or even charged with that, and that's a government problem and that needs to have a government accountability. So all these political parties can fucking go fuck yourselves because you, 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 you all talk about this shit, but you don't do anything about it, period. I don't get calls from officials saying, hey, Mr. Law, can you help us what we can do here better? Obviously, I think I know more in the system than they do. They think they know it, and their egos won't let them not know it. So if you're an official, you ask me about it, I'll fucking tell you, and I'll tell you how to fix the system. And I did that on my show uh, in, uh, in the prison uh, on my uh, The Real Deal podcast and last Monday I actually talked about that well I think this has got me bad enough I think we know what happened to this young man he was abused he don't belong there this is mental health month I want you to get involved somehow somehow some way get involved try to help the system I love when I get emails from you guys and young people asking me I'm doing a project in, in high school about it or college good for you do it you know, listen, I, I always end these on a positive note, and I have to make good choices, man. Don't go to prison. Don't do what I did. Don't fight the system the way I had to fight it. You know, fight it from here. Fight it from being illogical. Become elected officials where we got people with a heart and compassion. And I don't care how many cycles it takes to do that, but let's do that. Uh, have a great day, everybody, man. Stay safe, please. Think about Mental Health Month this month, and please help somebody. You'll feel better about yourself. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon.